Welcome viewers to our University of Pikeville Film and Media Arts Festival Promotional. I'm here with my guest Andrew Reed, the founder of the festival. So Andrew, this is our fifth yes. annual film festival coming up here. So man, it's been a long time. Most festivals <laughs> are pretty lucky to get only their second out and this is our fifth. So that's pretty, it's pretty incredible. So we're what, excited. What, what's excited. happening at this year's festival coming up? Well, we've got a lot of things in store for the public to come check out. And, you know, first I just kind of want to explain what a film festival is so people are aware, you know, you, people might have heard of Sundance Film Festival or something like that. But, you know, we've got a festival right here in Pikeville, right in people's own backyard. So we want to tell people a little bit about the film festival and then get into some of the specifics. We've got trailers for some of the films we're going to show. We're going to talk about it because we really want people to know about these amazing films that we've got coming up this weekend. We've got uh, probably about 50 films we're showing, a lot of short films. So really excited about the event. Um, so first of all, the festival is a curated screening of, of, of films. And so uh, we, we had a class that you know, you're a part of uh, mm -hmm. where we watched all these films and we chose the ones we liked the best and we're going to screen them for the public to see. Uh, we'll have Q&A discussions with the filmmakers uh, that come to represent those films. And this event is all going to take place at the University of Pikeville on uh, Thursday, April 4th, Friday, April 5th, Saturday, April 6th, and Monday, April 8th. And we've got a complete schedule that's available for viewing at fmafest.org with all the breakdowns of the movies and everything like that. Uh, and so people can find out about all the films there. And we're going to be talking about a few here today. But, yeah, five years. It's, yeah. it's been a long time. Yeah. Um, and it's, it started in 2015. Yeah, uh, and I know yeah. over those five years, there's probably a lot that has changed since then. So um, what's improved over the years since we first began this, this festival? Well, it started out with just myself and two students, David uh, Chapman and Aaron Asbury, who are both uh, working for Pike TV now. They came to me and said, hey, let's start a film festival. It's my first year at U-Pike, uh, and uh, it was early, and it was in February. And uh, we only had a few months to even get ready. And we, in February, we started taking submissions on Film Freeway, hosted the thing by, by May, and we only showed at the time Kentucky, Virginia, and West Virginia, because we're right here in that corner. So we're kind of a tri-state festival. But since that time, we've really expanded. In 2016, we started taking submissions from around the U.S., and we also created a class at UPI to oversee the festival. In 2017, we started taking submissions from around the world. And then last year, in 2018, we did a lot. We added a screenplay competition. We added an awards banquet, and we actually added a third day of screenings this year we are adding a fourth day of screenings and uh, we're going to have more filmmakers than ever before. So that's a lot going on for this whole event happening. Mm -hmm. So I know we have the fourth day of screenings this year for the festival that's changed. Um, anything else that's we're doing that we're doing this year for the festival that's different from the past few years? Well, why don't we show people a really nice promo uh, to let them get some insight into what all is going to be happening. So let's roll that right now, David. The fifth annual FMA Fest is set to begin Thursday, April 4th, with panels on filmmaking and digital art alongside screenings of high school films as well as UPIC faculty and student productions. Friday, we'll see screenings of multiple documentaries with Finland showing at 1 p.m. Beginning at 6 p.m., a block of short paranormal films will be screened followed by The Darkness on Church Street, a documentary about a real-life haunted house, along with a Q&A session with the subject and filmmaker. Saturday's festivities will begin at 10 a.m. with a feature film, The Mountain Miner. Table readings begin at 345 in Record Memorial Room 312 with the scriptwriters on hand for any insights into their work. Monday, April 8th at 7 p.m., the festival will end with a screening of the award-winning documentary film, Hillbilly, in Kristen Auditorium. The film is a timely and urgent exploration of how the rest of the country perceives Appalachian people. Let's start talking specifics, Andrew. So starting on Thursday, which is actually tomorrow, mm -hmm. what's, what's going to be happening when we get there? 
All right, so our kickoff event is that morning at 9.30 a.m. and we've got three really great speakers all lined up in a row and each of them are actually from this area and that's, that's something I'm really, really excited about. So first up, we've got at 9.30 a.m. Marianne Fletcher. And so Marianne is a reporter and producer at WYMT and she's actually a product of the UPike Film and Media Arts and Communications program. Following her, we've got Mitch Dameron. Mitch, uh, taught karate here for a while. He's got a, a varied career. He was a police officer, I believe, in Louisville, but he's actually in the past year started doing acting work for the Oxygen Network, ID Discovery, and I think he's done like nine shoots in the past year on a lot of these true crime shows. And so we're going to show some clips from his work, let him talk about how he got in the industry. And last, we've got artist uh, Christopher Epling. He has done a lot of illustrations for for books and he's also been a cartoonist in many newspapers and so he's gonna be talking a little bit about his career and so that's kind of our kickoff event for that morning so we're really excited uh, for what's going on that morning. Yeah and I think it's kind of nice to come to show that there's more than just one way into getting into the film festival. There's absolutely there's several ways in yeah, getting yeah. into it whether it's acting whether it's being behind a camera whether it's even screenwriting you can be behind a computer and be part of this industry. That's exactly right. There's a lot of ways to get involved in, in making films, and that's, that's a good segue into the next event that takes place. Um, after those presentations by those three folks at, at 11 a.m. tomorrow on Thursday, we're going to have about an hour block of high school films. And some of these films are not just regular you know, fictional films. There's, there's one that's completely animated. There's one, uh, and that's, that's uh, Double Cross. Uh, it's an animated basketball film. And then there's one called How to Make a Movie that is literally told from the perspective of someone on their computer. It's literally video of the screen that's recorded of a, a young filmmaker's journey to make a film and using Google to find things out and the ups and downs. It's, it's a very unique approach, and I'm really excited to, to share that film. Um, after the high school films, we'll have a small lunch break. Then at 1 o'clock, we're starting our UPike showcase. And so if you're interested in coming out and seeing just the films that UPike students and faculty are making, this is the block you want to come see. We've got three uh, segments here in the showcase, three blocks. The first one is strictly documentaries. The second one is strictly narratives. And then the third one is some more documentaries. And after each block, we'll have a quick Q&A with the student filmmakers that are there. Um, I'll mention a few of the films. We've got some thesis films from some of our uh, recent seniors. Uh, we have a film called Let It Roll that follows a... a um, person that becomes so obsessed with Dungeons and Dragons, he starts to live his life based on how the dice that he rolls uh, turns out. Another film, Taking the Stage, looks at the UPike Theater Program and some of the things those, those young students are, are going through as, as, as actors and actresses. We've also got a film uh, documenting artist Jeff Chapman Crane by Megan Stepp. Another film that is kind of a found footage uh, horror film by one of our camera operators right here in the studio right now, Devin Sick. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have a film about a, uh, two different uh, race car drivers by Corey Fields that we're showing. So those are some thesis films that we're screening uh, amongst many others. But we've also got uh, some films here that, that you have, have made. That is true. Yeah. And I know it's going to be in the first two blocks of one of them, which is going to be in the narrative, or excuse me, documentary, um, short films, which I did with my friend Claudette, which mm -hmm. was based on um, medical school uh, spouses, which was actually completely her idea, and having her having a fiance who's in the medical school here, and I thought I'd tag along with her, and it actually be came out a lot better than what I it first written down on paper, which is normally the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Whenever it's usually yeah. you hear the quote, "This looked a lot better on paper," <laughs> I actually found out that in my opinion I thought this looked a lot better whenever it was all said and done yeah. and my other two being more of a fan of horror movies Absolutely. During, our, during our October Horror Fest block yes. Yes. Um, I remember submitting two of those films and I always had so much fun filming these type of movies because before whenever you see them in theaters when you're a child and they scare the daylights out of you mm -hmm. um, you know, it makes you never want to see him again. But once you see what really goes on behind the scenes, it turns almost more into a comedy for me, and mm -hmm. it, or more just interesting at that point. Um, you know, just seeing what actually happens whenever something jumps out at somebody or somebody gets scared, or you really see what goes on behind the camera, and it's quite interesting to be honest. It is. It is. Well, I'm I'm really excited to to see the reactions to your films again. It was fun showing them at our at our horror fest uh, screening back in uh, back in. Uh, last fall. Um, 
I'll mention briefly too. There's there's uh, two other films that we're having in the UPike Showcase. One uh, is by Ronnie Hilton, who teaches our broadcasting classes and is over Pike TV. He's got a documentary that he's been working on. He's going to show. I've got an old documentary I'm showing that features uh, features my late father. I wanted to uh, to showcase that and show show what he some of the things he's done in his life. That's about uh, farming and some of the struggles farmers face. So I'm. I'm looking forward to that, and uh, those, those screenings are going to wrap up our UPike Showcase that Thursday. And so we probably will end about 4.30 that afternoon on Thursday. Okay. So wrapping up Thursday, we'll, we'll be a little bit tired after that. And I think so. Get rejuvenated for Friday. So <laughs> mm -hmm. what's going to happen on Friday morning when we come back to the film? Uh, all right. So Friday we have a full slate, and so that's kind of why we're giving people Thursday night off. Also, the auditorium was needed for another event, so we had to, uh, we couldn't have any screenings that Thursday night. So Friday, 10.30 a.m., if you like documentaries, especially documentaries on historical th things, we have a, a short block of documentary films. We have one on an um, interesting uh, a documentary about a town that uh, called Ren Renville, I believe. Um, forgive me if filmmakers watching, I misquoted that that name. Uh, but it's a, it's about a, a a a town that did some experimental things at that time uh, and built a community there. And then we've also got a, a film about the Charleston Ballet Company and how it was founded. That's that's a really interesting historical doc. And I believe the uh, one or both of those films will be represented by a filmmaker. I know the ballet one. I'm pretty sure it is. So we're very excited to have have that person uh, come. Um, next up. A feature-length documentary, uh, and so that film is called Fiddlin'. So if you like Appalachian music, if you like fiddling, <laughs> it's a great film to check out. Um, and after the film is over, we're going to have a musical performance by someone that was featured in the film. Well, so not only is it a movie, but it's also a live show too. So. It's a live show. So you it's, get the best of both worlds. Yes, that's right. Just like <laughs> Miley Cyrus wanted. Yep. Um, all right. So let's roll the trailer for Fiddlin'. Big Fair last September, a time I well remember. I was walking up and down in foolish pride. When my knees began to flutter and I sank down in the gutter and a pig came up and lay down by my side. As I lay there in the gutter thinking words I could not utter, I thought I heard a passing lady say, you can tell the man who boozes by the company that he chooses. That's right. That's right. And with that, the pig got up and walked away. Amen. In terms of fiddlers conventions, Galax is better than any of the others. It's absolutely the best because one of the things that people like about old time music is you can trace the lineage, you can trace, you know, you can go back generation by generation. If you win at Galax, you're considered one of the best to try. Pick me. Memories. No hold it with me always where I'm going. And they trigger feelings and it can emote so much in your mind. And when I feel sorrow, oh death is in my view. You can feel it. Oh where my wildflower perfume. Music's been in these mountains here forever way further than any of us can remember. Holy smoke! Can you believe that thing come out of there? So that's fiddling right there. Um, after that happen after that happens, what's happening next? What's coming up? All right. So the first film, uh, fiddling, was a documentary there. Followed by that, we've got a narrative film. Uh, you know, a, a fictional uh, film, but it's based on some some real you know historical kind of events. It's called Summer of '67. And so if you're interested in in drama and maybe some war films or films in those kind of period 
settings, uh, I recommend this. It's from a Tennessee filmmaker, and it's about two sisters you know, struggling to live their lives and keep their families safe uh, and, and uh, hope their husbands come home from the Vietnam War. And we also have a trailer to show you right now for Summer of 67. Hey, I'm Van. Van the man. A guy honks and you go running like in the swinging 60s. Come around here much? I'm pregnant. Did you tell him? Uh, we're serving together on the USS Forrestal. enters your life, you're never the same. The war is mighty lonely. Whatever front you're on. Peace is the only war worth raging. Catherine Louise Morgan That girl has embarrassed the entire family. Baby girl, you don't know what you want. You're off cruising the world on your supercarrier and I'm stuck here with your mother. He's my precious baby. They're all just a bunch of baby killers where I'm supposed to be, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm so sorry. It's not the first time. It won't be the last. Whatever happens, we'll always have this time together. I love you. And that love has changed all of us for us. Don't go. May that love comfort us in the days ahead. Bye, Peter. So that looks pretty interesting. And after that coming up, I think is going to be one of my favorites is the horror film block. Yes, sir. Being, being a fan of horror, you know, for, I wouldn't say most of my life, but in, in the recent past years, um, I've always just enjoyed the, the feeling of it and the adrenaline rush that you get from watching these certain types of movies. Mm -hmm. So what, what do we expect in that upcoming yeah, block? Yeah, sure. So it's, um, there are some horror films in the block. Um, I, would, I would probably say it's, uh, it, a lot of it's paranormal in nature, too. And there's a lot of different tones. It's not all straight-up scary stuff. But that's, that's, that's exciting to me this is, that there's a variety in it. So I'll talk about a few of those films that we're, that we're showing in the paranormal block because I really think this is something a lot of our students are going to want to come check out and maybe more members of the public. You know, I mean, I'm a fan of docs, all kinds of stuff. But I, there's I, nothing wrong with a good scary movie or a good scary short film. I love Goosebumps, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Twilight Zone, all that kind of stuff. And so I think that there's a lot of just, any, anybody would love to come see these films uh, in particular. So we'll talk about a few of these. Um, there's a, a short film about a, uh, a ghost that actually uh, befriends a young girl and helps uh, that person solve their own murder. And I, I really got a lot of Are You Afraid of the Dark vibes from this show. I love Are You Afraid of the Dark. Um, it was, it's a really interesting, well-made short, I believe, I believe from uh, around Tuscaloosa, I believe. Some uh, University of Alabama student made it. Um, there's another, another short film about a new Grim Reaper uh, that goes on the job, and it's actually kind of a comedy. And so I think people get a kick out of that. Uh, and there's another film that, uh, that's about a vampire that makes an appointment to see the dentist. So you might imagine the, uh, the dentist has some ethical dilemmas there, whether or not to fix this vampire's teeth problem. Um, so it's an interesting little, little short, uh, short kind of comedic horror film there. Uh, after that little paranormal shorts block, and we, we should have a few filmmakers there to represent those films and talk to the audience, but after that block, we've got a feature-length documentary that is really, really interesting and really had me hooked, uh, as well as my wife hooked throughout, and it's called The Darkness on Church Street, and let's roll the trailer for that documentary. This is a small town. Small towns don't keep secrets, and there's never a shortage of opinions about anything. I don't know if here is any more haunted than else, or even what it really means, but I do know that Appalachia is dark and scary. Some things are dramatic, and other things can keep you awake at night because they make you think about the big questions 
any attempts at logic or making sense of a situation like this can drive a person almost mad. Here, there is no sense to be made because it just doesn't make any. I just have to live with it. Well, I know that trailer was pretty interesting, and from my understanding, the filmmaker will be there, yes. and it's based on a book as well that he will be there to talk about and maybe even sign a few books there. Yeah, the uh, the guy that wrote the book and is also the uh, star of the film, Guy, his, it's his name, is Guy, he's, he's going to be there to, to have some copies of his book to sell and to sign. And um, I was really, you know, stuck on this film for a long time. I'm not going to give any information away and spoil it, but if you like true crime, if you like paranormal stuff, it's definitely worth checking out. And I'm going to really look forward to buying a copy of that book and getting it signed as well. Um, and so that's going to uh, that's going to wrap up the screenings, but then after that, we've got something afterwards at Buffalo, Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings. I know yeah. I'm going to be bringing my appetite for that. Yes, sir. We're going to have a little get together there. It's informal. Uh, just show up, you know, and hang out with the filmmakers, uh, that kind of thing. So we should have a good time at Buffalo Wild Wings that that evening. Absolutely. So after that, it's coming up on the weekend. So what's going to be going on on Saturday? Yes. So Saturday, we kick off the third day of the fifth annual Upike Film and Media Arts Festival. Uh, on that Saturday, all the films will be screened in Booth Auditorium right here on campus, just like all the screenings uh, for Thursday and, and Friday were. Um, so all the screenings we're gonna, are gonna be in Booth on Saturday. There are a few table readings of some screenplays that'll take place on the third floor of the, that building. Uh, so the, the booth is in the fifth floor, the table readings are in the third floor. And, uh, the, the screenings kick off that morning at 10 a.m. with a really interesting film called The Mountain Miner. And, you know, if you're someone that likes Appalachian music or music in general, uh, you definitely want to check out Fiddlin' the day before, and then you probably want to come back for The Mountain Miner because this film is all about a young boy that's growing up kind of immersed in music, and it looks at several different generations of this family and how one person uh, ages and kind of goes through his life, all set in the backdrop of, of rich Appalachian music. And we have a trailer to show you now. Sure. When we get the last of them beans in, we're gonna move to Ohio. You ever been to Ohio, Pat? Never had any reason to cross that big old muddy river. Me neither. What's your name? Charlie Abner. I don't want to go to Ohio. I like it here. It's all right. And there's people and buildings and cars everywhere. You think you're going to go back there after 50 years? And it'll all be the same. But it won't be the same. After 50 years, it won't be the same. I would give anything to hear Mama's voice one more time. Just once more. Young Emily Rose in the morning. She's putting on her clothes. We'll come back someday, Charlie. I promise. We will all be back here someday. The Lord's music's all around you. It never stops. When you play that fiddle, you're part of it. Charlie, I don't even know where home is anymore, do you? These old mountain tunes will bring you back home. They'll bring you back home. So there you have the Mountain Miner playing on April 6th at 10 o'clock a.m. on Saturday. So I know that film, whenever I got out here, I wasn't that aware of mountain music in, um, in the Appalachian region with a lot of bluegrass feels to it. Um, and it kind of gave me this whole different perspective on music since I've gotten out here, like just driving down the road, 
you know, it always made me want to change to a different station. Now I want to, instead of listening to, you know, old school classic rock, I've been appreciating a lot more bluegrass music mm -hmm. and this certain area of what music has been all about. So after that, um, I, I'm aware we have a lot of international films that are coming in. Yes. So tell us a little bit more about that upcoming block. Yes, I, I think all the international films that we, we got that we chose to show are in the international block. And so if, if that's your kick, come on and check those out. Uh, there's, there's several different ones, dramas, um, uh, I think mostly dramas. There's one in particular I wanted to highlight that just really just blew me away, and it's called Profit. And do you remember seeing Profit? I do. That one's about all the... Um, the uh, roof climbers, correct? Yeah, and yeah, and it's all filmed on a GoPro, which mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure that's not all special effects in there. That's uh, <laughs> that, that's what that, I was that thinking. It looks like real. Yeah, you know, yeah. If you've on ever the edge of a building. Yeah, for those watching this at home, if you've ever watched these parkour videos uh, online of people doing free running and stuff on rooftops, this this film is about that topic, and it's it is a fictional film but you wouldn't think that at first just watching it but it does look very real and I'm kind of I, I too wonder how much of that was staged and what how much isn't but it's a very very gut-wrenching you really worry about those folks in that film and uh, it's 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 a, it's a cautionary tale really and I, I recommend that uh, that film specifically out of that block the others are great but that one man that one blew me Definitely. away I know watching that it kind of drove up my anxiety a little mm -hmm. bit mm -hmm. you know feeling myself on the edge of that cliff or the edge of that building. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it was quite an interesting short film to watch. Absolutely. And uh, following uh, that, that block of international films, we, we have a, a documentary shorts block. And I'm, I'm excited about that because mostly what I do is make documentary films in terms of my, my work that I create. So I have a special place in my heart for documentary work. And there's certainly some great films that we're showcasing this year. Uh, a few I'll mention. Uh, one is called Derby, and it's kind of a different look at the Kentucky Derby. Uh, more specifically, the folks behind it that, that make the event happen, and then also kind of looking at the individuals that attend it. And it kind of, kind of uh, implicitly explores the class divide that you have at such an event. Um, and so it's an interesting film with a different kind of look at the Kentucky Derby that you haven't seen before on television. Uh, another doc in that block that is, is really, really good is called Out of the Pills. And uh, out of the hills, you know, the play on the words there. Yep. And it looks at the opioid crisis that we have in this region, uh, kind of exploring a few different characters and, and one man in particular and his, his journey to face these issues. And he will actually be here with, I believe, some of his family members uh, to see that film and talk a little bit about it. And it's a good film because it's honest, but it also gives some hope, I think, for others that are facing these struggles. And so uh, I, uh, I recommend it. The other film that I can remember in that block is uh, about a... I think it's called A Mother's Will. Uh, sorry if I got the title fl flopped. But it's, uh, it's about a, a, a young uh, a mother that, cr that writes a, uh, a musical about uh, her son's suicide. Mm -hmm. And kind of exp uh, the film explores that. And so it's a documentary about her making that musical to, uh, to, to, to discourage people from making that choice. Absolutely. It's a very, very moving doc. And I know a lot that whole block is going to be focused on different topics that are very real mm -hmm. in a sense mm -hmm. and you know I think would be very inspirational for a lot of people to watch and I think that's one of the main topics of or main points of being a filmmaker is Absolutely. getting the story across mm -hmm. and you know getting this point to your viewers Absolutely. if, if uh, you know if somebody is feeling a certain way about it, you know different life decisions you know it, it gives them a perfect insight on somebody who has that same exact story and telling their side of it. Absolutely. Film, film is all about telling a good story. If you don't have a good story, you don't have a good film. So it Definitely. starts with that. It doesn't matter how much money you put in a camera. Mm -hmm. If you can't tell a good story, you can't tell a good story. You know? Absolutely. Um, and um, the next block following the documentary shorts is our avant-garde slash animation block. So if you're interested in non-typical films, more artistic films, or animation, this is the block for you. There's some really cool stop motion animation films that are here, as well as traditional animated films. A um, few I'll, I'll mention briefly here. Um, one called The Spirit Scene. It's, it's set in the Appalachian uh, region, uh, I think around the 70s, uh, a while back ago, but it's all about the relationship between a young girl and her grandfather. Uh, and it's very, very interesting and, and out there in terms of the directions it takes. So I really can't recommend that, that film enough. Uh, lots of other great shorts in that block as well, and uh, um, I, can't, I can't recommend that block enough. Uh, after that uh, block, um, 
we will have some more screenings going on, but the first event we have is a table reading of a script. And so if you, for those that don't know what a table reading is, it's where you have a script, you have the screenplay, and usually you have the writer there, that's what we're gonna do. And you have different people reading different roles in the script, kind of reading it out loud, like you're actually making the film there. And so we're doing a table reading of the feature length script called Lexington Blue, and that screenwriter will be here. And this is an interesting screenplay. This screenplay, it's a musical, but it's about a young Kentuckian who is orphaned after a sinkhole swallows his mother's trailer, and he grows up to become a computer hacker. And so it's, 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 it's got some good drama in it, some good comedy, uh, lots, of, you know, lots of great jokes. I really like this script. And so if you want to be a part of this table reading and, or read or just observe it, uh, you can come to, uh, come to Record Memorial Building, the same building where the screenings are going to take place, but go to the third floor instead. And it's in Record 312. So that'll start at 3.45 p.m. that Saturday. I'll go ahead and jump ahead and mention after that screening there are two other table readings of two scripts, The Trinket and The Box. Uh, these are short scripts. Uh, one of them is written by a U-Pike uh, screenwriter and a theater minor, uh, uh, Dylan uh, Martin, I believe. And it's a short horror film about some murders that are connected to this mysterious box. And so those are the table readings. Uh, and then uh, there is one other block of films that day, uh, and that is the narrative shorts block. And so when we say narrative shorts, that's film festival sl uh, slang for uh, fictional films, but they're short length. Okay. Narrative basically means a fictional film, right? Yes. Documentary is for the other mm -hmm. you know, stuff. So uh, this block, we've got some really well-made films. A lot of these are, are local films. Um, they're all dramas. So you know, if you're into dramas, that's where you need to be. There's a few I'll highlight, one called The Cold Season, uh, really well-made. It's by a young man named Josiah Stendhal, who has a group called Real Difference that he uh, promotes on Facebook. People can check that out. He'll be here to talk about his film and, and what he's doing with that program. And there's also a film called Cold Season, which I, doesn't have the the on it, that's screening right at the same time. I know there's a little <laughs> bit of confusion there confusion with there. which film was which. Yeah, and so th both those films are, are screening during that block. So that's, that's a good block to attend. And then after uh, those blocks and that table reading, 6.30, we got an awards banquet. That's an invite-only event for the filmmakers that have been nominated for uh, yes. an award or have RSVP'd with us. We would love to have everybody attend, but we don't have the budget. Um, so that's, that's the awards banquet. But anybody is welcome to come to the after party after the banquet that night, and that'll kick off as soon as the banquet ends. We project around 8 o'clock at Bank 253, and yes. so people will be free to join up, hang out, buy whatever food they want, uh, and we'll be watching uh, hopefully Auburn beat Virginia in the Final Four, <laughs> which is something that'll probably, you know, never they'll probably never make it back again, so I'm hoping they can win. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm a lifelong Auburn fan, so Ooh. very excited about that. I know I'll be there celebrating after the film festival's mm -hmm. complete, and I'll be looking forward to that. So that's, you know, it's going to be quite a busy Saturday. Busy though. Saturday, and that's why Sunday is off. Sunday is a day of rest for us at this film festival, as it should be, and uh, because uh, we are going to have one more closing uh, night screening, one more final screening that we got. We're fortunate enough to showcase the feature-length documentary Hillbilly, and so this movie is doing really well on the festival circuit nationwide. Um, and its co-director, Ashley York, is, will be here to do a Q&A. And she's actually from this area. She's from Meat House. And so she's uh, local, and she'll be here to talk about the film. And the film really explores Appalachian representation in, in media. You know, you being from California, you probably had some really different insights of, about what you thought people here would be like until you got here. Oh, absolutely. And that's what this film is trying to do, is to, uh, is to, to talk about media stereotyping and mm -hmm. truth versus reality and just kind of uh, make a conversation. And so uh, we have a trailer to show you for Hillbilly right now. Hillbillies are really nice, but some people think that we're horrible people. <laughs> The term hillbilly has plagued the Appalachian region, and more recently, Appalachia was singled out as the reason for Trump's rise. People had a certain perception of us. A woman once asked me if I knew who Johnny Carson was. She didn't think we had TVs. No other region in America is more misunderstood than Appalachia. This commitment to characterize the region as poor means that coal companies can come in and exploit the entire region. It's only a region of trash, so why not trash it? 
People have been victimized because there's no public outcry. They don't care about people like us. I mean, stereotypes do vicious cultural work. Hillary said that we were all deplorables. A lot of young people want to escape as soon as possible. It's tiring to have to hide who you are as a person. It's Thursday, and I'm glad that I can be black and forget that I'm a hillbilly. Everybody has an Appalachia, somebody that they can feel superior to. The hills stand for so much. Those attempting to portray the region must understand the complexities of poverty and pride and culture. Oppressed and exploited people can turn against people with whom we should stand in solidarity. I probably would identify as a hillbilly. I'm a hillbilly and I'm very proud. Andrew, I'll definitely be checking that film out. And I know it's a very high-end film that made it into the Nashville Film Festival competition. So it's competing mm -hmm. with some high-end films I'm yes. aware of. Yes, it's, it's, it's a big hit on the national stage. Well-made, well-deserved accolades, and we're happy to have it here. And um, I just kind of want to make sure people know that uh, they can find out all, a little more about all these films and other films we didn't have time to mention by going to our website, fmafest.org. That's F-M-A-F-E-S-T dot O-R-G. We have a downloadable program with information on all the films as well as a complete schedule. They can also look us up on our social media channels. We use the handle at FMAFest on all the platforms. We use Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And so they can go there and look up information about our festival. And if people attend, we really want them to share their thoughts and uh, encourage others to attend on social media and tag those accounts. We really want people to push it. We'd love people to come out. And again, as a reminder, it's all free to attend. Uh, everything is open to the public except the uh, awards banquet. And we would love to have you. And you can find out more at fmafest.org. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Andrew. That about wraps up our time for today. Mm -hmm. And thank you to our viewers. We will be seeing you tomorrow at the FMA Fest, Thursday at 930. We'll see you there.